Well, we, first of all, we recognize that the engine of the BC economy is small business. And you'll see in our platform um, that we really take a look at the, 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 the structure of how taxation is occurring. You'll see in our platform that we really are putting small business first. And you'll also see that um, we're, we, when we outline our taxation plan, that it's a fairer way. We've got um, a very, very um, um, cumbersome taxation system with all boutique tax credits, credits, etc. Also, I would argue that um, people need to recognize that the strength of a diverse economy is when you actually provide an environment that, that rewards and encourages innovation and creativity. What we have here in BC and, and what we recognize in the party is we, have, we are the most beautiful place in the world to live. And that is a key strategic area that we have that we need to build upon. Uh, we build upon that by ensuring that we protect that, that beautiful, beautiful place to live. And we use it to attract industry in highly mobile sectors that can go anywhere. And we can offer these uh, the businesses something that other jurisdictions can't. That's access to boundless, sustainable energy, water, and wood. And that's another key strategic advantage that we have. And the third key strategic advantage that we have is our education system is second to none in the world. So when we take our three strategic advantages, the BC Greens will outline a way forward that builds on our strengths rather than chases the weaknesses. You know, I'll pivot off to, to tell, you know, what I, I stood alone, for example, in the, in the BC legislature, stood alone for four years, saying it is fiscally foolish to, ch to chase an LNG rainbow that's simply not going to happen because of a global glut in natural gas supply. And you can go back and look on, on record in 2012, and I've still got my PowerPoint presentations. We knew that the Isthmus Panama was widening. We knew there was infrastructure on the U.S. coast. We knew that, that Australia had, had production coming on stream. We knew that Russia was signing agreements with Asia. And sure enough, it panned out. And so what has happened there you know, is that the B.C. Liberals have, have, have picked a winner. They've picked a winning sector, and they've picked winning companies in the winning sector. The role of government is not to pick winners and losers. It's there to create, a, create an environment that incentivizes and allows innovation to flourish. That's what the BC Greens will do. We won't be, you know, say we won't be picking winners and losers, and then desperately trying to deliver on an election promise by subsidizing, in the case of wood fiber LNG, each and every one of those 100 jobs to the tune of $440,000 per year. That's ludicrous uh, in terms of a public subsidy for for an industry that would not otherwise be here. But what we would do instead is is is, is provide the the, the 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 framework for innovation and create, creativity to flourish. So there's a couple of things here. Um, first off, with the Montney Plate, there's no question it's, it's a very important resource. Uh, right now it's only literally being used because of the liquids and the oil and the, the gas is being pumped back down in some cases because there's no market for it. So, so I, my, my position is let the market determine the conditions. Let the market determine if that truly is the resource, the next resource that's coming out of the ground. So that's one of the reasons why um, the concept of basic income is an important concept to start to bring in because of the fact that we have automation and we have job. It's the, the idea of one job, one life. Uh, you know, you get well. We start in the fifties where dad goes to work in a union job, mom stays home, and away you go. And then mom and dad went to work in union jobs. Uh, you know, they had daycare, and now that's kind of changing. It's like some people have jobs and then they switch to other, they move gig jobs, etc. So that, and that, as we've moved towards that transition, with especially through automation, we need to have that, that, safety, that safety net. I would argue that affordability is, the, is a key barrier to technological growth, particularly in Vancouver, which is why the investment in broadband is critical and, and starting to empower um, communities outside of BC, outside of Metro Vancouver and Victoria, to actually you know, bring the tech sector together with the resource sector. I, again, I come to Prince George. You know, whether we win seats in Prince George or not doesn't matter. What I do know is that that has a strategic van advantage over pretty much any other West Coast jurisdiction because it's cold there. And it's, and it's got just, if you connect Chetwin nearby, you're on, you got broadband redundancy and you could have major data centers there. You bring data, center, data storage centers there, like the Google centers or the other centers, you start to enable a tech sector and then the tech sector spills over into, you know, resources. People are innovative. You just, you give people 
uh, the opportunity to be innovative and creative and they'll respond and we have a whole record of human history in that regard. So tech is, tech employs way more people <laughs> than the resource sector, we all know that and they're typically higher paying jobs. Um, one of the things that you'll see emerge in our platform is that what, what tech does need a little more is a little more support. Um, what, what we do in, Canada, in, in Vancouver is we're very good at taking the idea to you know, the, the 50 person company and then selling it and it moves to, to, uh, to um, California. That, that's great for the people who had the idea and it creates wealth for them. It's not so great for the sustenance of, we, we shouldn't just be incubators for other companies. We need to actually keep them here and people like Hootsuite have made a, <clears throat> a strategic decision to, to stay in Vancouver. You know, they don't have to, but they do. And so there needs to be some ways to actually uh, nurture these people to stay here, provide some um, areas of angel investing and, and things like that. There's a, there's a couple of aspects. Um, coming down Canby Street on the way from the airport on the way here, you're seeing how one of the ways that, that, that uh, needs to address that. One of the ways is clearly supply. Um, I do think that we have a problem in, well, first off, Going back, uh, I need to take back a little bit because I stood alone again in the legislature raising this issue about two and a half, three years ago before it was going off when, when I was pointing out that there was, there was transactions that were going through bear trusts where foreign money was coming in, beneficial ownership was changing, houses were flipping and this was unhealthy creating a boom. Uh, Mike DeYoung, uh, the Minister of Finance, stood up and said he didn't think this was an issue. Okay, that's a matter of public record. So one of the things that needs to be done, first and foremost, is transparency. We still have a problem here. Um, the government has closed that trust loophole for foreign investors. It has not closed that trust loophole for other investors. Property transfer tax, it, it's a regressive form of taxation, I recognize that, but it, it needs to be stepped up on transfer of beneficial ownership, not just transfer of title. And, and that, that's, a, that's a huge problem because what's happening is you have a, you have a speculative market. It, 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 it sort of in some sense invest, it incentivizes sp speculation versus, versus home ownership by allowing you to um, buy a property and trust um, and have a corporation own the trust and sell, sell that corporation. That's going on in Vancouver, I know that. I know that for a fact. Um, a second thing is I, I do agree with, with Mayor Robertson um, about the importance of vacancy tax. Uh, when you, we, we see the stories in Vancouver downtown of the massive investment in terms of that beautiful new architectural building where things are going for 1.7 million for a one bedroom suite um, and the, the comment is that many of these have been bought up as just vacant properties. I, there's a social cost uh, uh, to, to by having a property in Vancouver and leaving it vacant. The social cost um, is, is one that can be dealt with and provide a source of revenue. So if you're a municipality and you have a vacancy tax um, and, and Victoria is wanting it now too. And again, you, you, you would enable it, you wouldn't impose it. You'd enable municipalities to do that. Uber, yes or no, I put in two private members bill long before the BC Liberals did. I did this uh, in May of last year. I introduced enabling legislation for ride sharing. How can you be viewed as a, a tech innovator if you're not willing to embrace tech innovation? The only reason why the, the Liberals, I mean the tech sector was, we had a lot of support from the tech sector. The, the reason why the Liberals actually talk about maybe doing it sometime by December, maybe if they get elected, uh, is because they saw that happening. And that's the difference between principled leadership versus political calculations. So my, my private members bill there for a matter of record from May of last year, and if you look what the Liberals announced, it's identical. Except for one thing that I had in my first draft of the bill, which was to allow regular taxi cabs to pick up and drop off in any, any jurisdiction. And the reason, why I, I, the reason why I took that out of the original version that I had was because of the, the it, with, with ride hailing it's very easy to determine how municipal taxes are allocated because you have an app that says where you pick up and where you drop off. In a, in a, in a, in a regular taxi uh, sense, it's much more difficult because, you know, you, it, unless you have the, the, the app systems in place and that requires more, more I mean, some of the cabs have, have apps here in Metro Vancouver, but not so much in other jurisdictions too.